Hello and welcome to my session about Asia Virtual WAN, the future of your WAN. Before we start, I'd like to uh, say thank you to all of the sponsors of this session. Thank you to Microsoft of the event sponsor and for sure the Platinum and as well the Gold sponsors. Uh, about myself, my name is Hannes Lagler Grüner. I am a lead cloud architect in one of the biggest consulting companies in Austria named ACP IT Solutions. I'm working with public cloud more than 10 years uh, in different areas. So I have, I'm specialized into uh, the classic infrastructure as well in security, automation and so on. Since last year, I'm also a Microsoft Asia MVP. And if you want, you can visit me or you can find uh, my social profile on Facebook, Twitter, Xing, LinkedIn. And I have for sure my private YouTube channel where you can also visit this session and as well, much more sessions too. Okay, today we have a session about virtual one. We have a huge agenda. Uh, first of all, we will talk about what is virtual one? Why should you use it? What are the benefits of virtual one? Then we go ahead and talk about the architecture of virtual one. We are covering the old architecture, so the traditional architecture and as well, uh, the new architecture design version one and version two with virtual one. Then we are going ahead and talk about the components from Virtual One, what you have to configure, then the uh, options that you have for branch office and headquarter connections, and at the end we are talking about a short, a short uh, introduction about partner integration and monitoring, and at the end I will show you Virtual One in action, so a really live demo, how Virtual One performs, how you can work with Virtual One, and anything else. Okay. Then let's start with virtual one, but before we start, I'd like to uh, give you the answer about what happens with my finger and as well, <laughs> this is the good starting point for my session today, what happened with my finger. So I have a discussion with my hedge trimmer and at the end, I've lost. I've lost, I go to the hospital and I uh, have some uh, troubles here. And at the end, why should not managed. Why should I not uh, using a managed service to, hedge trim, uh, to trim the, the hedge? And as well, this is for the private life, as well for the, for, from the business perspective. So why you should do everything by your own? Why should do you um, uh, configure virtual one connectivity, branch to branch connectivity? Microsoft built up a, a service named virtual one, which can you help to um, implement or to achieve those um, solutions. Okay, so let's go ahead and enough from me. So uh, what is virtual one? Why should you use it and what, what happens? The official statement is virtual one is a network service that brings many networking security routing functionalities together to provide a single operational interface. So this is the official statement. And on top to this statement, uh, it's an hub and spoke network uh, architecture. So you can build up hub and spoke network architecture over virtual one. You can connect different Asia regions together. So at the beginning of your cloud journey, you have the discussion, okay, what kind or, or what uh, Asia regions do you want to use for your architecture? And with this architecture, with this solution, you can connect all regions together. But it's not only for Asia, it's also for your branch, uh, for your on-premise uh, branches um, uh, design. So you can connect your branch office, you can connect your um, uh, headquarters as well. And at the end, you can use the global Asia network backbone to connect each branch office and each Asia regions together. But the question here is, what is so special about the global Asia backbone? And here's the answer. The answer is, you can see we have a huge uh, landscape. We have a huge, uh, we have more than 60 regions available over uh, the, whole, the whole world. So you can connect each regions together and you can bring all regions or you can bring the, the nearest connection point to your branch office. For example, when you have a, a branch office or headquarters in East US, you can also use the East US connection from Microsoft or the, the region to connect this branch office. We have more than 130 fiber subsea cables. We also have the Maria C cable, uh, which is uh, built by Microsoft, Facebook, and a third 
uh, provider as well, to, and uh, you have the, the ability to transfer 1.7 terabit per second in this uh, connection. We have 170 edge connections and more than 500 partner connections and 20,000 peering connections over the whole world. Okay, so the architecture. From the architecture perspective, what is the traditional and what is the new way when, you talk, when we talk about Microsoft, when we talk about Asia? The first, the traditional way. So in this case, uh, we have, for example, an MPLS network over our uh, branch office, uh, connecting, uh, connecting our branch offices as well as our headquarters. This, this offices are all connected to the main data center in my location. Uh, the problem here is we have different latency. So we have different latency, for example, from uh, branch office 2 to the cloud. And when we think about uh, MPLS, when we want to uh, bring a new location to the MPLS environment, uh, the pro it has a long provisioning duration. And in many situations, the bandwidth is really bad because it's expensive. So when you add a new location and you have want to pay for this location, it's really expensive. And in most situations, we are using a lower bandwidth because it's much cheaper, cheaper than a, a faster connection. Okay, the problem here is more and more services are migrated or placed to the cloud. So we need a new network design. A new network design is needing for uh, the services placed in Asia and also for the connection from the branch offices. What is the traditional way before virtual one? You can do this in this way, so we can uh, provision um, a VPN gateway in each region and also place uh, or also peer other reg regions with this virtual one network gateways together. But in this case, we have some problems because uh, the configuration is more complex. It's really hard to uh, expand the configuration, so when you have a new, a new region, to assign uh, this configuration to the um, existing architecture. We have no centralization, so the problem here is where is the configuration, what is the right configuration, and this is also different in many situations um, on each region. The pro here is for sure you're connecting directly to the cloud. So the branch office and the headquarters connecting directly to the cloud. You have a lower latency between your branch office and to the cloud. And um, you're using the Microsoft backbone for the region interconnect. So this is the pro what we have in this old way in the version one architecture. Let me think about virtual one. What is the benefit of virtual one? This is a new way. In this case, we have uh, virtual WAN hubs provisioned in each, re in each region and each branch office is connecting to the nearest virtual WAN hub and you're also using the Microsoft backbone for the interconnect between the regions. So the pros here are it's less complex because you have a central centralized configuration, um, you have a centralized monitoring as well and the limitations here are much higher. So from the old architecture, you also have uh, VPN gateway limitations. For example, when you're using VPN gateway uh, 5, you have a limitation of up to 100 side-to-side -side VPN connection. You cannot connect more um, uh, branch offices or um, more connections together. In this case, we have a much higher limitation and it's less complex because you have a central pane where you configure everything in one pane. And at the end, you, you can also use a branch to branch connection and over the branch to branch connection, you also use the Microsoft backbone if you want. For sure, we have also a uh, con. In this case, it's up to 30, uh, 33% uh, cheaper. Uh, it's, it's, uh, the version one is up to 33% cheaper as the version 2 and the limitations are available but it's much higher than in version 1. Okay, so let's go and let's talk about the components itself. When we start this virtual WAN, we start to installing the virtual WAN service itself. This is the central control pane. 
So inside the control pane, you configure everything. And the first, what you have to configure, or the decision what you have to, um, to clarify is what regions do you want to implement in virtual one? It's the same discussion when you go to the Azure cloud, when you start the, your cloud journey, you have to discuss, okay, what kind of regions or what regions uh, should, you, should you want to use? In this case, we are um, provisioning a virtual one hub. In my case, in my demonstration, we have provisioned a virtual one hub in West Europe and East US too. And inside the virtual one hub, we can provision a virtual one hub gateway with different options, so we will uh, cover this a little bit later. And now, a new topic, a new thing, we can provision multiple virtual, virtual one hubs in each location. So you can provision, uh, for example, two virtual one hubs in, in East US 2 if you want. And this is really important, virtual one hub is not the same like a VPN gateway. Why? You will see this in a few seconds later, because the limitations are much higher than uh, the traditional VPN gateway. Okay, so the next hub, also when we are configured virtual one and the virtual one hub itself, we are thinking about the connectivity. Normally, we have automatically a hub-to-hub -hub connection, so this is uh, available when you provision virtual one hub, and then we are go ahead and talk about, okay, how we can we connect the on-premise, the branch office or headquarter to this virtual one hub. We have here three options. We can use a side-to-side -side VPN connection, so from our headquarter over IPsec to the cloud. We can use an express route connection. We will cover this also a little bit later. Or we can use a point-to-side VPN connection from my laptop to the environment. And at the end, we can also uh, connect for sure Microsoft virtual networks. So inside the Azure cloud, we can uh, implement spoke networks. But here, keep in mind, we have a limitation. This is not a limitation from the virtual manhood itself. This is a, a peering limitation. So Pro, as a per virtual one hub, you can only connect up to 500 spoke networks. So you can connect 500 virtual networks to the virtual one hub. Okay. Then we have the connection, we have the connectivity represent, and then we can uh, configure root tables if you want. So we have different uh, options here available. You can use the default root table, or you can configure your custom root table if you want to isolate some um, uh, virtual, ones, uh, virtual networks or branch offices from other, you can define this over the root tables or you can use at the end firewalls if you want. You can populate manually your routes to your branch office or to the virtual network or you can configure dynamically propagation over B2B if you want. And at the end, we also need a virtual one hub site and this represents the location, the branch location, where you have to assign the public IP address from your branch location where you want to connect. And the end is, at the end is the virtual one hub site link, and this also rep represents the connectivity between the virtual one hub and your on-premise branch office, including uh, the shared secret and also uh, the connect uh, the, the speed as well. Okay. Now we are ready, but keep in mind we have two virtual one hub types available. So we have the basic configuration and we have the standard configuration. What is the difference? When, we are, when you're using the basic configuration, and this is only my recommendation when you have a single uh, connection endpoint, you only have side-to-side -side VPN available. You don't have express route, you don't have point-to-side uh, VPN connection available, only side-to-side -side VPN. You can connect virtual networks from the cloud for sure. You have the scaling option, so each, each virtual one have uh, the ability to scale up manually and scale down if you want. And for sure you have high availability, so each virtual one hub, everything uh, um, is provisioned with two instances in two different Asia regions, so you have a high availability. Another really big point here is you don't have a hub-to-hub -hub connection. So when you configure or when you provision a virtual one hub basic and want to provision this virtual one hub in East US and West Europe, you cannot use the basic because there's no hub-to-hub -hub connection available. If you want, 
uh, this functionality you have to upgrade to the standard and this is possible from the basic so you can upgrade from basic to standard no problem but you cannot revert back from standard to basic keep this in mind and the standard uh, virtual one hub has the same functionality as the basic but you have the hub to hub connection for sure you have the express route and side, a point to side vpn connection available you have an any to any transitive connectivity and you cannot upgrade you cannot downgrade from basic to virtual one hub okay so that's are the components from virtual one let's go ahead and talk about what options do you have to connect your branch offices and headquarter to virtual one the first is, we can see here, an architecture from a multi-region uh, virtual WAN solution. In this case, we have two regions, region one, region two, and uh, all as well, some uh, virtual networks connected from Asia. We have the option one, a side-to-side -side VPN connection. We have the option two, point-to-side VPN connection, and the option three, express route. Let's go a little bit more in detail. The first thing that we have is a side-to-side -side VPN. You have the option here to connect multiple links from on-premise, so if you have more ISPs, you can connect different uh, uh, those ISPs to the um, virtual one hub. It's always redundant, so you can um, connect more ISPs to the virtual one hub, and it's an active-active connection. You can scale up. Each virtual one hub, normally you are starting with one scale unit. This is the minimum of um, uh, speed, uh, minimum of throughput that you can, you can, that you can choose. It's uh, one scale, scale unit is 500 megabits for each node. So you can use, uh, so you get two 500 megabit connections. You can scale up to 1,000 or you can uh, choose 1,000 side-to-side VPN connections per hub. And this is the difference between virtual one hub and traditional side-to-side -side VPN hub. The side-to-side -side VPN has a maximum of 100 connections and the um, uh, virtual one hub up to 1,000 connections. You can use EQV1 or EQV2 for, two, for sure. And you have a FQDM-based, a PSEC or a dynamic DNS support. And at the end, you can configure, if you want, a custom PGP configuration to propagate every uh, route dynamically. And, for example, for a AWS connection, you also have the ability to configure custom IP addressing. Okay, the next is point-to-site VPN. Keep in mind, this is only available in the standard configuration for standard virtual one hub. You can also scale up to 20 gigabit per seconds. You can scale up to 10,000 users per virtual one hub. Um, from the connection perspective, you have different options. You can use uh, certified based authentication or radi radios based authentication. But from my point of view, the best option that you have here is the Asia Active Directory authentication. Why? Talk, let's think about uh, Office 365. When you're connecting to Office 365, you're using your user principal name, your password, and you also have the um, uh, conditional access policies in place. For example, you have a second uh, multi-factor authentication over your handy, uh, over your mobile device, and so on. And you have here the same experience. So we can use, or we can download uh, the Asia VPN client from the uh, marketplace and configure the connection with the same options, with the same uh, username and password, as well multi-factor application to connect to the uh, virtual one endpoint. And at the end, you can use, uh, you have the ability to uh, uh, connect to other branch offices or to other vnets in the Asia cloud. And the last option that you have is Express Route. Uh, it's also available only in the standard hub configuration. You can scale up to 20 gigabit and have eight circuits per region. You have the option here to uh, implement the private peering. Private peering here is for the internal network, so for infrastructure service. And you can also implement Microsoft peering. Why should you use Microsoft peering? So um, let's think about um, a Microsoft storage account, for example. Microsoft storage account in the standard configuration is available or is accessible over a public IP address if you don't implement a private link. In this case, when you're using the standard configuration, your firewall admins have to uh, 
um, allow the connection to the public IP address over the firewall. And when you are implementing uh, Express Route, you have the Microsoft peering, and each public IP addresses will be uh, um, propagate from Microsoft to your internet network, and the traffic will go over the Microsoft peering and not over the internet. In some situations, it's also possible to um, implement Express Route and uh, for the, um, um, to encrypt the traffic, you can also use side-to-side -side VPN over Express Route if you want. Okay, that's about the branch office and the headquarter connection options, options that you have. And let's talk about, in a short um, few minutes, about the partner integration. We have here the ability to convert the virtual WAN hub to a secure hub. You can use uh, here a checkpoint, you can use here um, um, a Cisco environment, you can also use um, um, Fortinet if you want. The cool thing here is everything is full automation able. So you can provision everything in the cloud over ARM templates and you can also configure your firewall on premise in one step. So uh, the partner integration have here the ability to uh, implement those in one step. And if you want, you can also use the Microsoft Azure firewalls. This is my recommendation in this case to um, uh, secure the connection between the two hubs and also have a firewalls in place. And at the end, the monitoring. Monitoring is everything really important. Uh, here you have two panes, here you have two views. The first view is the virtual WAN pane. And here you can see a visual end-to-end -end connection. So is everything uh, okay? Everything is working fine. You also get a metric overview about uh, your connection endpoint and this, this information are stored into a log analytics store. And at the, at the end you also have the ability to use the network watcher to connect, to test your connection, to test the, uh, the latency between your connection, and at the end to bring an alerting option to your environment. Okay, that's about the theory. Let's go ahead and uh, let's talk about, or uh, let's um, show, about, uh, show how is it really in action. So first of all, we have here our environment, this is our live environment. We have three regions in place. We have two regions in Asia in place and three branch offices. We have East US 2 and West Europe connected. We have different uh, virtual networks in Asia connected. And we have uh, three branch offices, one in the East US, one in UK and one in West Europe. The first test is we are connecting over point to site VPN from my laptop to this environment. Then we are go ahead and I will give you an overview about virtual one, so you will see the control pane, the central control pane, as well um, the configuration options that you have. Then we we'll go ahead and make a connection test between branch to branch connection over the Microsoft backbone. We are also connecting from the branch office to the cloud and from the uh, uh, cloud, from the virtual network inside the cloud to another virtual network. Then we are testing a, a failover. So in this case, the West Europe and the East US branch office is directly connected. It's not connected over virtual one. The reason for that is we have a lower latency when we connect both uh, branch offices together. And I will show you how fast we can fail over to the Microsoft virtual one if the connect direct connection is broken. And at the end, I will give you an overview about the monitoring options, what you have, and the automation options. Okay, so let's go to the live demo. In this case. Okay, first of all, the point to site VPN connection. We have here the client itself, so you can download the Asia VPN client from uh, the Asia Marketplace, and you can configure the Asia VPN client. Um, it's really simple, so you have to import the configuration. And the configuration in this case is an uh, XML file, which is uh, available in the Asia portal, and I will give you an, uh, in a few seconds uh, the location where you can find this configuration file. So we are now connected, and you can see I have all IP addresses from my virtual one 
available. Uh, in this case, not only from Asia, it's also from all other branch offices. And when we go to uh, the Asia portal, you can see here we have the service itself, the virtual WAN service. And inside the virtual WAN service, you can see I've configured two hubs, one hub in West Europe and one hub in East US too. With different configuration, the virtual WAN hub in West Europe have two side connections and one point-to-side VPN configuration. And this is exactly where you can find the configuration file. So take a few seconds. When it's available, you have here the option to select the configuration. Here we are. And download the VPN profile. And when you have downloaded the VPN profile, extract it, import it, and you have the ability to connect to uh, your virtual one. In this case, over Asia Active Directory. So you have an open VPN tunnel here config uh, configured with an um, Asia Active Directory authentication. So here you have to configure your audience. In this case, this is um, the service principal, the issuer, and the Asia Active Directory tenant where you have to uh, authenticate. Okay, then we are connected in our environment. And the next point here is, this is the overview. This is the service. This is a central configuration pane for virtual one. We have here different options. On the left side, you can see here we have the activity log. We have access control EM, so you can implement role-based access controls. We can also assign tags if you want. Um, here we have the configuration, and you can see I have here a standard virtual one hub, virtual one hub type. You cannot revert back. So if you uh, provision a basic, you can upgrade to standard if you want. And in this case, the hub to hub is enabled, and what you can choose uh, is a branch to branch to disable or to enable if you want. Okay. So the next point here is we have two virtual one hubs, and when we um, have a look to the West Europe virtual one hub, you can see here I have here different connectivity options. In this case, side to side VPN, I have, pro uh, I have provisioned one side to side VPN with one scale unit, and one scale unit means 500 megabits uh, for each node. So every time when you install virtual one, you always get two nodes and each node have 500 megabits. And you can see here uh, in the gateway configuration, the public IP addresses from VPN gateway instance zero and one. Okay, so inside uh, the VPN um, virtual one hub, in this case, uh, the side-to-side -side VPN hub, we have to build up um, a VPN site. In this case, I have uh, configured the site for UK. And here you can see the link, and the link represents the, the on-premise environment with the public IP address, with the BGP address, the link ESN, and the speed for this connection. At the end, we have here two connections, one for UK, one for West Europe. And you can also see here the root tables from the connections. So in my configuration, everything is configured uh, over BGP, so the roots are propagate over BGP and this dynamically. And you can see here in a few seconds, the roots are automatically configured. Come on, yes. So I have here my default root table. Uh, I'm sorry, not here. The default, so when you, when you implement, when you uh, propagate to default root table, all locations get the information, okay, what kind of routes are available. When you propagate to none, nothing gets the information, so no one gets the information. But you can configure your custom root tables if you want and say, okay, uh, I want to pro uh, propagate only my routes from my location one to the uh, custom root table one, and this is propagate to uh, the region two, for example. So you can configure everything what you want. Okay, so effective routes. So here you have the configuration. Come on, take a few seconds. This is a live demo. So in this case, <laughs> take a few seconds to get all configurations. Come on. So you can choose here the 
default. And here you can see all routes from all locations with the different um, path in this case and also what is the next hop uh, from side to side VPN uh, from, from the hub uh, perspective East US 2 or West Europe. Okay, so a really cool feature here is insights. So in this view you can see the first monitoring pane, the visual end-to-end -end, um, design from my environment. You can see I have here uh, my different regions, my, my different branch offices. I also have my virtual network connected in different areas. So from West Europe perspective, from East to West 2 perspective, and also my um, uh, connectivity to the branch offices in UK and East US 2 is available. So everything is working fine in this case. And when we think about the connectivity test, so I've prepared something here. You can see here I have my clients. I have here one client located in East US 2. This is my branch office in East US 2. This is a Linux client, and this Linux client is uh, um, connecting to my client in West Europe over the Microsoft backbone. And you can see we have here uh, a latency from 190 milliseconds from East US 2, from the uh, branch office East US 2, to the Asia endpoint, to the Asia Virtual One Hub, over the Microsoft backbone to West Europe, and then to on premise um, um, of, uh, with 190 milliseconds. When we think about the um, uh, throughput, so we'll test it here with the same. And you can see here the connection throughput scale up to 115 megabit per second from a branch office in East US 2 over the Microsoft backbone to the branch office in West Europe. So from my point of view, a really good connection, a really good connection point. And you can also see the latency is not falling, uh, not growing up when we test the throughput because um, we have the... Uh, latency here in place. Okay, here from the VM UK to the West Europe uh, connection, you can see here we have a 10 milliseconds uh, through um, uh, latency. The reason for that is we're connecting both uh, branch offices directly together, not over the Asia Virtual One. And I will now pr um, stop the connection between those two um, branch offices. And you can see, no, um, we have now a latency of 26 milliseconds. So the connection, direct connection between the branch offices is broken and we have fail over automatically to virtual one if we need this. So I will follow back here, enable, and it will take a few seconds. You can see here 26 milliseconds and in a few seconds it's going down to 10, 10 milliseconds. Now we have the direct connection in place. Okay, so when we talk about monitoring, we have here the first option. You can see here the insights. You have, can have here a, a, a visual design from your endpoints. You also have, have here the metrics in place. Come on. So you can see here the, the bandwidth from your side-to-side -side VPN connection, your, from a point-to-side VPN connection, and if it's available from Express route. You can also um, have a look to the workbooks, the, the pre, uh, predefined workbooks. So in this case, we can also export this configuration if you want. And at the end, we have also here the ability to uh, use the network watcher. So I have here a connection test from West Europe, for example, to the on-premise environment. To implement this, you need a virtual machine in uh, Asia with the networking uh, uh, network watcher extension installed. And you can select, okay, from which endpoint do you want to connect? 
this case you can see here we have a virtual network with two hubs to the destination. And when we go to the details here, and we select this, com this connection group and click on edit, you can select here your testing group. And in my case, my testing group is a virtual machine in the virtual network 0, uh, 03. This is uh, testing an ICMP connection to uh, an on-premise environment every, six, uh, every 30 seconds with a maximum, I mean, maximum uh, round trip of 20 milliseconds. And this is my IP address from my on-premise environment, from my on-premise uh, VM. And this is my test. And if it fails, you can also implement, if you want, an alert. So an SMS, a uh, phone call, or an Asia function, or whatever you want. So here you can see I have one alert in this uh, connection group. Uh, and the reason for that is a round trip time. And when we go a little bit more in detail, you can see here a few details. We have here a round trip time of 30 milliseconds for the connection between West Europe and East US 2, uh, UK, I'm sorry. And here we have a round trip time about 80 milliseconds from uh, West Europe to UK, uh, from West Europe um, uh, cloud endpoint to the West Europe on-premise endpoint. And this is the reason because I've configured this connection group not up to 20 milliseconds. I've, connect, I've configured here 50 milliseconds is the maximum and this is the reason why I get here an error. And if you want, you can configure here an alert once more. So we can go here to create an alert. And we have here different options. We can say, okay, uh, average round trip time, for example, and we want to um, um, get an alert when it's greater than 20 milliseconds. And then we can go to the action. We can uh, define a new action group. So in this case, monitoring. Sorry, this is not so easy with my finger. Come on. Test. So, when we go to the notification, you have here different options. You can uh, send an email, an SMS, a push or a voice notification if you want. Or you have the another option too. You can run, execute a runbook, an Azure automation runbook. You can also uh, execute Azure functions, send the information to Event Hub or to uh, ITSM. So Microsoft have here uh, a few pre-configured uh, ITSM tools which um, uh, support that. You can execute a logic app and so on. Okay, so that's it about the uh, monitoring perspective. At the end, we also have the ability to um, implement automation. So my whole configuration here is uh, not manually configured. So I have here a template in this case. And this is an ARM template. You can also build uh, Bicep templates or Terraform template templates if you want to uh, provision the whole configuration. In this case, I have here my virtual WAN configuration, my virtual networks uh, will also provisioned over this template and also the connection to the on-premise environment. And here you can see a visual design of the configuration. So we, here we have our two virtual WAN hubs, one in West Europe, one in East US 2. Here the central configuration pane. Here our four virtual networks in Asia also connected to the virtual WAN hub. And here you can see I have the VPN gateway in each location. One VPN gateway and uh, one VPN gateway including a point to site VPN configuration. Okay, so any questions? Yes. Are you required to create a hub in that region as well? You have here different options. So the first option is you can uh, provision here a hub in the different region, or you can connect the virtual network for the different regions to a uh, virtual WAN hub, for example, in East US 2. So I can show you this step here if you want. So we have here, for example, the virtual network connection. 
And we have here our two virtual WAN hubs in place. Come on. Come on. Okay. So, yeah. We have one in East US 2 and one in West Europe. And when you, when you want to assign a new network from another location, you can uh, define here name, select the virtual one hub. And for example, if you have um, a virtual network in another location, select the re, uh, resource group, select the virtual network, and you um, um, connect, you're connecting the virtual network over private peering or over Microsoft peering uh, to this virtual one hub. So it's, you don't need a virtual one hub in each location for virtual network connection. My recommendation is here, when you want to connect your branch office to the cloud, then provision uh, a virtual one hub in the nearest location, not for the virtual network. And why would you choose to deploy two or more hubs in one region? That's a good question. <laughs> I don't have an answer for this because uh, in the past I only uh, provisioned one virtual one hub in one region. It's enough for me. So uh, what can... Yeah, the limitations. So when you have more than 1,000 connections per region, yeah, then you have to uh, provision a second one. Yeah. Okay. Good. If there are no questions available. We come to the end. So what we have done, we, you have seen, okay, how you can, how I can connect to the uh, virtual one over point to site VPN with Asia, Asia Active Directory authentication. Uh, you also get an overview about the control pane of, of the about the configuration pane of Asia Virtual One. We also uh, test the connection between the different uh, locations, so uh, branch to branch connection. Virtual one uh, to uh, um, uh, virtual network to branch connection. Then we are testing the, pro, uh, the connection broken. So when we have uh, a connection, uh, when the connection is broken between West Europe and East US 2, we have a failover to the virtual one hub. The monitoring configuration and at the end the automation template uh, to configure or to provision the whole infrastructure here. Okay. So once more, a recap, why virtual one, what, is, uh, what are the benefits from virtual one, from the architect, uh, architect, architecture perspective, it's much simpler than the version one. So when you provision more virtual one gate, uh, a VPN gateways, you have uh, in many situations different configuration. Um, it's a simpler network design from my point of view. You have a full automation option, not only from the uh, services inside Asia, also from on-premise. So when you uh, configure, uh, when you have uh, partner integration, for example, Cisco, um, um, uh, Fortinet, and as well, uh, and, and so on, you can also configure your firewall on-premise in one step. Uh, the, the limits are increased in this case for side-to-side -side and point-to-side VPN. So we have uh, up to 1,000 connections for side-to-side -side VPN, and we have a much higher throughput in all areas. So from point-to-side, side-to-side, uh, and uh, express route. Um, Virtual One is per default high availability. So the hub are provisioned in two different zones. When you do this with a traditional v VPN gateway. You have to choose the VPN gateway AC. So uh, this VPN gateways are provisioned in different regions. In this case, from virtual one, it's per default high availability, and um, you can also include network virtual appliances or the Azure firewall if you want. So that's it. My recommendation once more: Why not manage service? In this case, uh, <laughs> I will do this in the future and also uh, from, from the business perspective. And at the end, once more, a huge thanks to the sponsors uh, for this uh, event, from Microsoft, for the Platinum sponsor, as well for the Gold sponsor. Okay, I think we are good in time. If you have some questions...
instead of doing traditional networking, yep. you should go towards a V1. Mm -hmm. So um, the first point here is when you reach the limitation from 100 uh, connection, you can choose, for example, uh, a basic virtual one hub. Then you increase the connection uh, limitation. The second one is uh, when you have a customer with uh, um, branch offices or headquarters around the world, then also recommend uh, virtual one. And the third option is when you want to um, implement a branch-to-branch -branch connectivity over the Microsoft backbone. You can do this with uh, traditional v uh, VPN gateways, but it's much harder to implement uh, than with virtual one. With virtual one, it's really simple. So you provision the virtual one hubs in each location. You enable the configuration uh, inside the configuration. Okay, the branch-to-branch -branch connectivity, and then you can implement uh, configure the routing tables and the connection between um, uh, the branch-to-branch -branch connection is available. So these are the, two, the three reasons. Anything else? Yeah. Is it possible already to um, connect both branches to each other? Because I thought it was a limitation as well. Uh, a couple of months ago, if you're using the Azure firewall on both sides, you cannot use the branch to branch. That's right, yeah. Uh, there are some pr uh, problems here with the branch to branch connection over the secure virtual one hub, yeah. Uh, but Microsoft is working on this. So uh, I hope in the next release, uh, Microsoft fixed this. Okay, then, thank you.